The skeptics, the defending national champions, unveiled a pack of talented underclassmen, and everyone, even Coach Bill McCartney, forgot it was a rebuilding year. Actually, Colorado needed few repairs because the chief architect, Darian Do-It-All Hagen, was bidding a sweet farewell to his extraordinary college career. Alabama knows bowls, but who knew Coach Gene Stallings would be savoring a 10-victory season? In Tuscaloosa, history repeats itself. You win with the likes of Saran Stacy, and to that kind of style, you add substance, the suffocating defense of Robert Stewart. Tonight, a meeting of past, present, and future powers, Colorado and Alabama. Buster Bowl. We are at the ultra-modern Joe Robbie Stadium for what promises to be one of the most competitive bowls of the season. Now the ground here is wet from some scattered showers, but the skies have cleared somewhat. It's number 15 Colorado against number 8 Alabama. Hi everyone, I'm Andrea Joyce, and tonight, a game of the old and the new. Colorado, whose program really came of age in the 80s, and Alabama, one of the most successful programs in the history of college football. And tonight, the Crimson Tide is making its 44th bowl appearance. That's 10 more than any other school. This also marks the beginning of the CBS college bowl season. And for the call on this first one, let's send you upstairs to Jim Nance and Dan Fouts. Andrea, thank you. It's great to be back on college football and a pleasure, Dan, to sit alongside with you tonight. And we're going to see the closeout of a career that's really one of the great option careers in the history of college football. I'm talking about the option operator for the Buffaloes, Darian Hagan, who led him to a national championship a year ago. And he's had such a wonderful career. I talked to Coach Bill McCartney just moments ago, and he says tonight's going to be the payback night for Darian Hagan's career. He's going to open up the offense. Come completely out of character and junk the eye bone. So we're going to see Darian Hagan at his very best tonight. Wow, it's going to be something to watch. Darian coming back from a knee injury from last year's Orange Bowl. Also bouncing back from a knee injury in 1990, Saran Stacy for Alabama. He had a big season for the Crimson Tide, Dan. Well, this is a young Crimson Tide football team, especially on that offensive line. And what Saran Stacy has provided for this football team is leadership and that leadership has taken the form of great performance. You know, I think if there was ever one college football matchup destined for a close finish, it would be Colorado and Alabama. Just look what happened this season, Dan. Well, it's because of defense, Jim. Both teams have outstanding defenses and coaches that are not afraid to take chances on offense. We should see a wide open offensive game as well. All right, well, we'll look forward to that. And right now down on the field, one of the great scenes and college football, one of the grand entrances. Here comes the mascot from Colorado, Ralphie Three, leading on the Buffaloes. season ranked number 15 in America and a share of the Big 8 title three straight years Big 8 champions the Colorado Buffaloes working with us on the sidelines we're pleased to have with us Jim Gray and let's join him right now backstage all right Jim as Alabama gets ready for its 44th bowl appearance you can't help but think back to the man who led them to so many of those bowls the legendary Paul Bear Bryant now, I had the opportunity to speak with current coach Gene Stallings, and he told me that he knows he's always going to play second fiddle to the bear, but he does not view that legend as a burden. In fact, just prior to his team leaving Tuscaloosa, he took the entire squad to the Paul Bear Bryant Museum on the campus, and that proved to be a very motivational visit. It kind of gets you pumped up and adrenaline rushing, and and you want to you want to just kind of live up to the level and expectation everybody has for you because you played Alabama and it's really really a great I think a motivational to uh, he taking us there and, and seeing um, 
what we're supposed to live up to and how good we're supposed to be. So as this team gets ready to take the field, Jim Nance, more so than any other Alabama team in recent history, this one definitely carries the tradition of the Bear. Jim? And here they come, number eight in the country with a 10-1 record, the Crimson Tide. Gene Stallings with a superb effort in his second season in Alabama. The only loss is to number three, Florida. It's Alabama and Colorado. College football is back on CBS. touch was he down well instant replay is looking at it right now yes definitely both the uh, right knee there and the right cheek of Ralphie hit the turf there uh, all I can hope for Jim is that that's not an omen for the Buffalo football team tonight or the Buffalo <laughs> <laughs> well Colorado won the toss and elected to defer until the second half so Alabama will receive the defending national champions Colorado Mitch Berger will handle the kickoff chores. And here's a dangerous man to watch throughout the contest. We're talking about David Palmer. They call him Deuce. He's a freshman, a true freshman from Birmingham, Alabama. He's run three punts back this year for touchdowns. And he's been 1,000 yards in all-purpose yardage for the Tide. And that's just a freshman. That is remarkable. What a career he's going to have at Alabama. See him everywhere on the field as a receiver. Summit quarterback. And trying to keep it away from him. They go instead to Derek Lassick. Out across the 20. And a nice run to the 30-yard line. Lassick is a backup tailback. We'll see action tonight behind Saran Stacy. But Jay Barker pulls the trigger at quarterback. A freshman making his fourth start. In the backfield, two seniors, the only two seniors on offense, Turner and Stacy, the receivers, Kevin Lee and Prince Wembley. Tied in at Steve Buskey. Here's a look now at Jay Parker. Coming out firing to Stacy on the sideline route at about the 34 yard line. Very young offensive line for the tie, Dan. Toby Shields is the center. The center of attraction, he'll be going up against Joel Steed. That'll be a matchup we'll be watching. But uh, the big thing, Jim, though, is this youth on this offensive line. John Stevenson, just a true freshman there. He's uh, look, looked upon as being a leader for the future. Averages out as a sophomore offensive line. A freshman, a junior, and three sophs. Second down at six for Alabama on the pitch. Here's Saran Stacy. Takes off the tackle of Marcellus Elder and Greg Thomas forced him out of bounds. At about the 37, Joel Steed. First team, All-America, Walter Camp, Leonard Renfro with Marcellus Elder on the line. Greg Beekert is the top tackler for the Buffaloes. And the outside backers, Ron Wolford, along with Chad Brown. Good secondary, headed by Figures and Bradford on the corners, and Hamilton and Thomas for safeties. Third down and three for the Crimson Tide. Three receivers in the game, shuffle pass. Stacy will have the first down. He breaks into the open at midfield. And caught in the secondary by Dion Figures. Thirty two yards Saran Stacy on the shuffle pass it's just a perfect call for the tide as perfect execution as Wilson comes along on the trap block and then into the secondary Dion figures makes a touchdown saving tackle right there as he lays out but a big third down conversion for the tide and they're in business David Palmer is in the game lined up to the right now coming in motion first and ten from the 30 here's this dangerous freshman touching it for the first time. And he gets about five. Eric Hamilton. 
Strong safety on the hit. Gene Stallings told us that in order to beat the Colorado defense, uh, players such as Palmer and Stace are going to have to come up big and make some big plays. And he's not going to be afraid to use Palmer all over the field, as you mentioned, Jim. Uh, we saw him there on the reverse, and we'll also see him play a little bit of quarterback this evening. He ran a touchdown in from 10 yards out, lined up as a quarterback against Auburn. Second down and five to the short side with Stacy. And about two yards for Saran. Been busy this week trying to pick up a passport, Dan. He's headed to the Japan Bowl, as several other players are, including his backfield mate, Kevin Turner. Yesterday at 6.30 in the morning, he was in Miami trying to get his passport all straightened away for that all-star game in Japan. And he had to go back to uh, have his picture retained. He could have used this picture right here. That's a good one <laughs> there. Good one. But going to the Japan Bowl, that's a nice capper to a wonderful career. And one of the coaches will be Bill McCartney. Third down. And two. Out of the eye, Stacy on the pitch. Look out. They've got him for a loss. Chad Brown forced the play. And Leonard Renfro was in on that action. A loss of five. And in talking to Stacy yesterday about his uh, favorite play, he says it's the toss to either the right side or the left side. Already this evening, we've seen the Tide run that three times. Well, the Buffaloes, they know it's coming as well. That time they did a super job and dropped him for a big loss. Matt Wethington will attempt the field goal of 46 yards. His career long is 42. Alabama's had trouble in this area this year. Field goal attempt on the opening drive. Wethington. Not enough. Touchback. Right. Alabama comes up empty on the opening drive. scrimmage is the 28 let me correct that they bring it out to the line of scrimmage after Alabama missed the field goal attempt Hagan throwing right away trying to swing it over to James Hill starting fullback and there he is Darian Hagan the quarterback who has presided over the finest three-year stretch in Colorado football history three big eight titles for Darian Hagan and a national championship never lost a big eight game as a starter. What about Lamont Warren at uh, tailback? Well, all he did this year was set a freshman record for CU with uh, 833 yards. Broke the freshman running record that had been held by O.C. Oliver. On second and ten, he'll fumble, and Hagen was right there to pick it up. And Hagen was there because he was carrying out his fake on the triple option there. Gave the ball to the up back and continued down the line of scrimmage. We'll see the fumble here, but watch Hagen. The ball comes right to him, heads up. A lot of players would just stop after he gives the ball to the running back, but uh, Hagen, the senior that he is, heady ball player, was in the right place at the right time. John Copeland helped strip it from Hill. Third down and eight. A lot of shifting now for the Buffaloes with the slot formation to the left. Flag on the field, jump pass by Hagen, and George Teague almost intercepted for Alabama. Sean Brown was in the area. We'll check the marker. Colorado will get another crack at it. It'll be third and three after the five yard step off. And let's check in now with the Buffalo's offensive front. It starts strong at center with Jay Lewenberg in All-America, consensus All-America this year. But newcomers on the rest of the line, including freshman Clint Moore, sophomore Roger Ivey, Anderson and Hansen are the tackles. Jim Hansen, all he is is a 3.7 GPA in aerospace engineering. How about that? Now, that's a real genius. I'm telling you, he's hoping to be a Rhodes Scholar one day. He's number one right now in the Colorado School of Engineering, number 77. Jim Hansen, the right tackle. Third down and three for the Buffs. Another flag, and they sack Hagen. Antonio London came blitzing in on the quarterback. That 
turf wedged in the face guard. Yeah, he got a little turf, but uh, he might also have been offsides. We've seen Colorado do a lot of shifting out of the uh, normal formations, but this one's going to go against the Buffaloes. The biggest problem that McCartney said as far as changing his offense is can he still protect the quarterback? Obviously, they can't protect him this time as Antonio London comes in and picks up his fifth sack of the year. Well, it was a motion penalty, Dan, against Colorado. The penalty refused, so give the sack to London and bring on the punt team. And there he is, David Palmer, freshman with three punt returns for touchdowns, had a fourth one called back this year. And he told us last night that he will punt to him. He's very proud of his punt coverage team and very confident if he gets a punt that stays up there for four and a half seconds. Mitch Berger is the Colorado punter, averaging 41 yards a punt. He was blocked once this year. This one a liner to Palmer at the 34. And a punt that normally he would relish to run back. And he is swung down by Greg Thomas after a seven-yard run back, a 38-yard punt. So each team has had it once. We're scoreless. Opening quarter. Block by left as an All-American in 1989, now with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Keith, I want to ask you, there are all these reports about Bill Parcells coming to the Bucs as their head coach. Would you be in favor of that? Would you like to have him? Well, um, it was a business decision made by the front office, and I'm, I'm, going, I'm going whatever they want to do. You know, it'll be great to have him, but who knows what he's going to do. Okay, you're out here for Alabama tonight. Let me ask you about our game tomorrow. You played against the Bears. You've seen the Cowboys all week. How do you feel about tomorrow's game? Well, you have to look at the Bears. They are old line. They've been together a long time. They're very experienced. They know how to work together. But Dallas, they are, they are newborn. They're a newborn team, and they're hungry. All right, Keith, best of luck to you. Let's go back upstairs to Jim Nance. Boy, wasn't he some rushing linebacker at Alabama? Keith McCancy left after his junior year. We just saw a near interception by Dion Figures on a pass intended for Steve Buskey. So the Tide now facing second and ten. The ball was almost deflected over to his partner there, the, the deep safety, but uh, trying to hit the tight end down the middle didn't work. Lassick is in the game getting the pitch and a good run for Derek Lassick with a lead block from his fullback Martin Houston and Matt Hammond at left tackle. We're seeing now Stallings go to his second backfield of Martin Houston and Derek Lassick. Lassick gives the Tide a, a little different type of runner than Durant Stacy. What you see with Lassick is a guy that changes direction very quickly, very enthusiastic young man, really enjoys playing. A junior from Haverstraw, New York, averaging over five yards a carry. Third down and four after a six-yard gainer by Lassick coming out in, in motion now. Here come the Buffs. Barker gets it away. And a first down catch by Curtis Brown in Colorado Territory at the 45. Wonderful play by Barker as he avoided the rush, bought himself a little bit of time. Watch the blitz come right up the middle here. There's Beaker at 19. And he gets out to the outside away from Johnson. There's his wide receiver open in the middle. But the reason that Barker is playing right now instead of Danny Woodson, Gene Stallings told us, well, it was just common sense. The man has performed the last three weeks. All victories, all on the road. Danny Woodson. Backs him up tonight. He had started at quarterback the first eight games. Stacy fumbles the pitch but falls on it. Smothers it near midfield. Chad Brown uh, was there for good measure. A loss of six. What happened on this one, Dan? Well, it appeared he was looking upfield. This again is a toss play. Uh, Stacy's favorite play. And before he can get his mitts on that one, it went right through the bread basket. But who can blame him? Staring him right in the eye was Chad Brown. He's got some interesting plans for after this bowl game, huh, Jim? Got a nice little trip planned to Central America, Costa Rica, for a snaking expedition. We'll have to talk about that a little more. I know you'd like to have joined him. Second and 16, and whistle it dead. Delay a game.
Dead ball. Delay of game. On the offense. Still second down. Second and 21 now for Alabama. And Alabama showing some of their inexperience. Their youthful team with a freshman quarterback. Uh, that's a, uh, a mistake that has cost Alabama. In fact, Gene Stallings addressed it after the Florida loss. And what they do is very uh, unusual to have the wide receivers come into the huddle. They call the play. Then Parker gives the snap count to uh, avoid those type of situations. But that time, they were still a little bit too long. You've never heard of anything like that before, have you? No, I haven't. Uh, and we talked to Gene about it. Second and 21 pass in the area of Martin Houston. Gene told us the reason he has the wide receivers go into the huddle and tell the team the play instead of the quarterback is to save a little bit of time so that when he gets to the line of scrimmage, the quarterback can use that extra time to read the defense and make the proper audibles if necessary. Now, this was uh, an innovation that uh, Gene had when he was a tight end player for Raymond Berry Sr. at Paris High School in Paris, Texas. Gene Stallings called all the plays from his tight end position. Story. Third down and 21. Houston the single back. And he'll swing it over to Houston. Just getting into Colorado territory, but a punting situation. Greg Beaker on the tackle. Two possessions for Alabama, two times into the Colorado into the field without points. Eight minutes to go in the scoreless first quarter. Tank Williamson on the punt for Bama. And Darian Hagan fielding the punt and not getting enough room to execute the catch. And it's going to be a flag against Andre Royal of Alabama. You call it exactly right, Jim. He was within uh, uh, an eyelash of Hagan when Hagan caught the ball. And the referee says, uh, you've got to give that man a little bit more room to make that grab. Pass interference. I think you got to call this punt receiving interference. Yeah, pass interference. Fans didn't quite understand that one. I think he's going to try again. Five yard penalty, first down. Okay. Championship. We call him Mr. Magic and carry the magical attitude with him that, you know, no matter what the odds are, that we can get it done. You know, even when Hagen was out, was, was out of the game when he was hurt several times this year, that attitude that he brought has carried over to the whole team. So even when somebody else was in there, we knew that we could get the job done. The words of teammates Jay Lewenberg and Chad Brown as Hagen throws incomplete on first down. And that's what his teammates say about him. The, the opponents say he forces us to cover the entire width and depth of the field. The width with the option, the depth with the passing ability. Here's their iPhone formation, second down and 10. Give to Lamont Warren, his first carry, no gain. John Copeland corralled him. One of the great matchups tonight, Danny, is Jay Lewenberg at center for the Buffs against Robert Stewart, the nose man, number 34. Well, here it is right here. Watch Lewenberg come off this block here on Stewart and push him out of the way. But Stewart, with the quickness, runs himself out of the play. But Lewenberg, with the good agility to stay with him and push him by. And flags everywhere before the snap. Someone from Colorado up here to move first. They got Craig Anderson, the left tackle. Ball. Ball start on the offense. Both offenses are having trouble, and you can understand why Colorado might have a few problems with their new offensive sets they're using. They are having trouble protecting Hagen, and Hagen has been off the mark so far this evening. 0 for 2. And he's been sacked one time. He faces third and 14. And they shift everyone out of the backfield. Put three receivers in and a man on a wing. And here comes another heavy rush. Coming up from the safety spot, Stacy Harrison. as Dirty Harry, and I think he just made his day, Jim, <laughs> getting that sack. Again, Colorado having all types of trouble 
protecting the quarterback from the left side of the screen. You see number one sneak up here, and there's just nobody in the backfield to protect the quarterback, and he's got no shot at all as Copeland comes from the right side as well. Mitch Berger to punt from the end zone to David Palmer. This one a good run out to the 50. A high step move by Palmer to free himself. Look out. He may take it. He's got to beat the punter. He gets the block ahead. Return for a touchdown. He's done it. David Palmer. Tonight in the blockbuster bowl with a 52-yard run back. Hey, 